Got a wine. My third attempt to do this video. Can't go live. They won't let me go live. So I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to bring it out. My live stream got shut down twice. So we're going to keep going. So Most High is only dealing with the elect of the house of Israel. That's it. And we're going to prove that today. Rock the Yahweh. Rock the Yahweh shot. Call Halai Ma Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh shot. Bahashem. Kakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh shot. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honors and respect to the elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. So it's all about the elect and the true men of the Lord are exalted in the holy name, the Father, Yahweh. His son, Yahweh Shai, focus on Bible prophecy and glorifying the elect of the house of Israel. So we're going to bring it out. All about the elect. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Well, who is that few? <laughs> a remnant of the house of Israel, chosen before the foundation of the world. Let's go to who that chosen is. Let's go to Isaiah 42, verse 1. Who is the chosen? The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 1. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. See? So we're going to go into that. Who is he talking about? His chosen. Let's read it again. Book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 1. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Who is this servant? Let's go to Let's go to Okay, we're going to go here. Let's go to Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 6. Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. So he's dealing with Israel. Let's go to Isaiah 44, verse 21. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, 
for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. For the Most High has not cast away his people, starting with the elect. Let's go to Isaiah 45. Verse 3. So who is he dealing with? The book of Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Yasharala, he is a prince of the power. So the Israelite men elect are the sons of the Most High, the sons of Yahweh. Isaiah 45, verse 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. For the Most High has always protected his elect and formed a hedge around his anointed ones. That's why King David, through the Spirit, Though I make my bed in hell, thou art there in captivity. That's what it's talking about. He's there. Or in these fleshly, earthly bodies. Slavery. Oppression. Traveling on slave ships. Making our bed in hell. Thou art there. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. So he's dealing with those that have been chosen, anointed before the foundation of the world. Let's go to Ephesians 1. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So there is no such thing as free will. You either chosen or you're not. You either is or you ain't. There's no such thing as free will. It's all predestination. <clears throat> Ephesians 1 Verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Holy means separate, a separate holy congregation. Israel, elect, the book of Ephesians chapter 1, Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Hamashiach, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Where is free will of your own choice? This is the most highest pleasure and will. First fruits the elect or the first church of the congregation of Israel are chosen, preordained, preselected before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1 verse 5 Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai, Amashiach, to himself, 
according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. When you hear beloved, it's talking about the elect of the house of Israel. That's who he says that he loves. Matter of fact, let's go to um, Isaiah 43. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Nope, 44. Isaiah 40, yeah, 43, excuse me. 43, verse 4. Who is his beloved? Who does he love? The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Let's see who he's talking about. Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. That is his beloved. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. That's the elect of Israel. Verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. But we read in Isaiah 43, he says, I have redeemed thee, O Jacob, Israel. Ephesians 1, verse 8, wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. All we're reading about is his will, his pleasure, not our desire, not freedom of choice. Ephesians 1 verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Hamashiach, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. See, we've been taught nothing but lies. The Most High has favorites. His favorites are the elect of the house of Israel. That's who is going to rule in the kingdom to come. Let's go back to Matthew 22, verse 14. book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 14 for many are called but few are chosen for the most high has favorites he's very very nitpicky very picky why wouldn't he be he's the king of kings and lord of lords why wouldn't he be 
all about the elect. Let's go to Isaiah 65, verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, and inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. This is occupying the kingdom of heaven, the thrones of rulership, dominion over the earth, immortality, his elect, his fine glass of wine. Isaiah 65, verse 9. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah and inheritor of my mountains. And mine elect shall inherit it and my servant shall dwell there. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. This lines up with Revelations 21. Verse 3, I think. Let's go ahead and get it. Only pertains to the elect of Israel. But the other nations are going to go into captivity. Or be subjected under the tabernacle of David. And that includes the heathen Israelites. Let's go to Revelation 21. Verse 3, book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Let's go back to Isaiah 65, verse 19. The book of Isaiah chapter 65, verse 19. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying let's go to isaiah 65 verse 22. so he's very selective and preemptive on choosing who he wants that's why he told moses i will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Let's go to Isaiah 65, verse 22. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Well, these heathen and Gentile nations are going to build up the kingdom and the elect men of the tabernacle of David are going to occupy thrones and be crowned as kings and ordained as priests. Let's read it again. Book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 22. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. 
they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Well, the elect are going to be blessed, and the two thirds are going to be born into the kingdom of Israel of Israel, a new holy mountain, a new government. We're going to go to Romans 11. The book of Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, I am left alone, and they seek my life. What's the key here? Whom he foreknew, preordained before the foundation of the world, elect of the house of Israel. So he has not cast away his people, the so called Negroes, Native Americans, Latinos. Romans 11, verse 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed a knee to the image of Baal. So that seven thousand represent a perfect number of completion that he has reserved unto himself a remnant we're reading about the cream of the crop, the aristocracy, the ruling class, nobility. Romans 11, verse 5. Even so, then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace, a remnant of Israel. That's a one-third piece of the pie. By the election of grace. So the Father has to pre-select you, ordain you. He foreknow you. Romans 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be, of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So it's by free selection. And then we have to make our calling and election sure. Let's get that. Second Peter 1 verse 10. book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. So we can't use our freedom as a cloak of maliciousness and use the world but not abuse it. So we don't just get buck wild and crazy thinking that we already know that we're the elect. That's why we call ourselves the hopeful elect. And we try to keep the law to the best of our ability. Romans 11, verse 7. What then? 
Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back always. Well, this is a prayer to the Most High. He can blind you or open your eyes. What eyes? Spiritual understanding and discernment. The ability to see through the veil of darkness and deception by Esau the devil. So the Most High is very, very selective, picky, choicy. He is a king of kings and lord of lords. He's going to get the best grape cluster, the finest wine, the cream of the crop, nobility. Let's go to Psalms 78, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born who should arise and declare them to their children. Well, he's dealing with the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who the God of the Bible is dealing with. So the bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's get that. We're going to go to Psalms 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Who so he's dealing with the elect of the house of Israel. That's who he's dealing with. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 3. So when you read the Bible and begin to study and begin to listen to teachers, and if you're endowed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, you begin to see that a king has to have the best and brightest. That's just the way it is. It's not about emotions. It's not about our feelings. It's about his will, his pleasure. We're going to go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 7. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and from like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. This is the elect of the tabernacle of David. Men, they're gonna be raised up as mighty men and are gonna shine as the brightness of the outer firmament and as the stars of heaven under Yahweh Shai and under King David. Wisdom of Solomon 3. Verse 7, and in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and from like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations 
and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him, for grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. See? Elect sons and daughters of Jacob, his saints. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 15. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 14. For his soul pleased the Lord. Let's just get right to 15. Wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 15. This the people saw and understood it not, neither laid they up this in their mind, that his grace and mercy is with his saints, and that it hath respect, and that he hath respect unto his chosen. So pursuant to Psalms, chapter 148 his saints are the Israelites elect so notice to those that understand so the elect have the gift of the Holy Spirit but the minds of the masses are being confounded the wisdom of this world is being blinded confused Wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 13. He being made perfect in a short time, fulfilled a long time. So the elect are made as a fine art masterpiece. Fine, fine carved, handcrafted, made unto perfection. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 15. This the people saw and understood it not. Neither laid they up this in their minds, that his grace and mercy is with his saints, and that he had respect unto his chosen. Can't get around it. The Most High is nitpicky. He's got good taste, high taste. That's what the Most High has. Wisdom of Solomon 3, verse 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he have care for his elect. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. So these other people of the masses are extras in the movie. Extras tests, temptations, harlots, pimps, murderers, drug dealers, sodomites, extras in the movie. But his elect are being molded, molded, shaped, refined, perfected. Let's go to Romans 9 and 11. Book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So Jacob and Esau, Jacob was chosen according to election of grace. 
the will and pleasure of our Heavenly Father. Romans 9, verse 11, again. For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that called. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So Rebecca understood this, that it is the will of the Most High. His pleasure will have reign over us. So he is setting everything back in order. The sons of Jacob are being raised up from deep sleep. It's morning time and are coming back to the light. The lights are being turned on in the land of the shadow of darkness and death. Romans 9, verse 12. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. This is why you gotta remove emotions. It's not about our emotional, effeminate, opinions. It's about the will of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Romans 9, Romans 9, verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Let's go to 1 Peter 1, verse 2. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 2. Elect, what? Elect, according to to the foreknowledge knowledge of God the Father. So we keep hearing preordained election of grace who he foreknew before the foundation of the world. So you show me freedom of choice or free will. There is no such thing. We're all moving at the sound of the trumpet and the beat of the drum of the Yahweh Shai. First Peter 1, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So the spirit guides and directs the path of the elect and cleanses our mind, sanctifies us and makes us clean. 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Yahawashai, Hamashiach, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahawashai, Hamashiach, from the dead, 
notice have begotten us again. Who was the covenant made with? Old and new covenants were made with the house of Israel. First Peter 1, verse 4. First Peter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. So we're going to put on a new garment, new bodies, incorruptible flesh, a new spirit, a new mind, made into immortals, and occupy the kingdom of heaven. 1 Peter 1, verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So the elect are being sifted out in these last days, being gathered together by the word, walking in faith, not by sight, listening to the sound of this new song, this truth. First Peter 1, verse 6, wherein he greatly rejoiced, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. So we're being tried, tested. The Most High wants to make sure this fine gold is polished, refined, and impurities burned out. He wants to make sure his masterpiece is perfected. That means completed, made whole, First Peter 1, verse 6, wherein he greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Yahweh Shai, of Mashiach. So it's worth the wait. It's worth the test. It's worth the pain and affliction, tribulation, trials of faith, affliction, pain, sorrow. The kingdom of heaven is worth the wait. Nothing that is good comes easy. Everything we do in this life comes with a price. Nothing in this world is free. It's all about the elect. Let's go to Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. We have to enter into great tribulation, Jacob's trouble, being tested and tempted with the MOTB or Mark. Let's go to Mark. Let's, speaking of Mark, let's go to Mark 13, verse 20. The book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 20. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. So the Most High is speeding this time up. So the devil has come down having great wrath, knowing that he has 
but a short time. For the most, it is the Most High's good will to give us the kingdom of heaven. Those of us of the hopeful elect. Let's go to Luke 12 and 32. The book of Luke, chapter 12. Let's go to verse 31. We're going to go to Luke 12 and 30. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things, food, order, and clothing. We don't have to worry about that. Safety, protection. Luke 12 and 31. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So we know that kingdom is going to start with the elect. Let's go back to Mark 13, verse 20. And we're just speaking about Jacob's trouble, trial, and tribulation. The book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 20. And except that the Lord had shortened those days. No flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he had chosen, he had shortened the days. Let's go to Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So the powers of heaven are being shaken, cast down to the ground. The kings of the earth are being taken down from rulership. And all the heathen and Gentile nations are going to mourn a deep sorrowful cry, great despair. And they're going to be subdued, trample down underfoot, and they're going to go into captivity. Matthew 24, verse 30 again. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the one end of heaven even to the other elect Why aren't these churches teaching this truth? Because it is not for them. They're not amongst the hopeful elect. Let's go to Sirach 47 and 22. The book of Sirach, chapter 47, verse 22. But the Lord will never leave of his mercy Neither shall any of his works perish. Neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect. And the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away. Wherefore, he gave a remnant unto Jacob, and out of him a root unto David. This is why they taught an immaculate deception. There is a physical bloodline seed on the earth. The bloodline descendants, the posterity, the children, and children's children, children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
in the 12 tribes of Israel, so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos, the posterity of his elect. Sirach 47, verse 22. But the Lord will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish, neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect. And the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away. Wherefore he gave a remnant unto Jacob, and out of him a root unto David. So the Israelites are going to be established under the house of David, the thrones of kings, and a, a order of priests, a nation of high priests, the sons of Jacob. I'm going to close out here. We're going to raise up the tabernacle of David, the mighty men of King David, and King David, as in the days of old. And the elect sons of Jacob are going to take the kingdom. We're going to go to Isaiah 41, verse 8. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Isaiah 41, verse 9. Thou, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and call thee from the chief men thereof, and say unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Why are we being taught a replacement theology? Why? We're reading that the children of Israel has not been cast away. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's Yahweh Shai. So we're going to be strengthened and made holy and made into mighty men and put on the new bodies. These old bodies have to go. So we're going to be strengthened with incorruptible bodies. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. So this is the tabernacle of David being raised up as in the days of old, as in the days of the ancients. Where all the other nations were subdued under King David and then enjoyed a subsequent kingdom of peace under King Solomon. Isaiah 41 verse 12 Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them even them that contended with thee they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught for I the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not I will help thee fear not 
thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For right now we are a worm. We've been cast down to the earth. We're being devoured by all the other heathen and Gentile nations. We're being swallowed up. We are an easy prey. That's why he's calling us a worm. But a caterpillar turns into a butterfly and mount up wings like eagles. Supernatural abilities. Isaiah 41, verse 13. For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. For the Most High is raising up his holy mountain. We read about that in Isaiah 65. Let's close out with that one. That new holy mountain is the new righteous government. And then we'll close out. And I apologize, I couldn't go live. I attempted to do two live streams and they both were clipped. Go to Isaiah 65. This is the mountain of his holy government being established here on earth. Isaiah 65, verse eight. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. So two thirds on this side are going to be cut off and die, pursuant to Zechariah 13, verse eight and nine. Let's go to Isaiah 65, verse 9. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and my elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. So the consistent theme, the kingdom is going to start with the elect of the house of David. So the tabernacle of David is a spiritual house, the Lord's temple that's being rebuilt in these last days. It's all about the elect and the true elect prophets are prophesying and teaching and warning about the MOTB, about the new world order, about Jacob's trouble, trial and tribulation, okay? About these elites trying to shut down the global economy and institute a reset. And the elect are exalting the holy name of the Most High and glorifying the remnant of the elect of the house of David. So it's all about the elect. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rekakadosh. Double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity. Risking their lives and freedom to do so. Pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. And much respect and honor to the ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David.
that are following this gospel in truth and sincerity. We got next, Lord willing. We got to walk and be circumspect because the days are evil. We got next, Lord willing. Kwame Yasharala and Abai Baba. Barack of Thumb. Shalom.